Good morning, BLC. Are we ready to worship this morning? And worship our Lord and Savior. Because there, please rise and worship our Lord and Savior. Because there ain't no grave gonna hold this body down.
chains Wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be Oh God, I'm not who I used to be Jesus, I'm not who I used to be Cause I am redeemed Thank God we redeemed And then where does it lead? Where does it lead? We can only imagine. Special place for all you. He says he's going to be here. 
prepare a house just for you. Can you imagine that? And your 
children, and the children, and the children, may His presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you, He is with you, He is with you, in this morning, in this evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you, 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 He is for you. so much and we want you to go before us and behind us and around us and beside us we just want your favor to be upon us and within us God we just praise you and thank you God we praise you Lord but you are that God who desires that you desire that relationship with us and that's why you sent your son Jesus so that we could have your favor so that we could have your presence so that you could go before us and around us and behind us and beside us and within us we praise you god we thank you we love you god we praise you father lord i thank you for this day that you've given to us i thank you god for this first sunday of august lord that we can come here today to worship and to praise you lord i thank you for our saturday prayer that was yesterday and for those that came out god Lord, I'm just thinking right now of, of those that um, that we support uh, in terms of missions, Father. And today I just want to pray for them and lift them up as we seek your blessings and your presence, presence and your influence and your presence and protection around us, God. Lord, I pray for ARC, the Association of Related Churches, who are church planting. And Lord, we're in a season now where the church planters are being trained. In September and October, they'll be launching new churches around our country. We pray, God, for your blessing and your favor in their life, God. May hundreds and thousands of people come to know Christ because of these new churches being planted, Father. So we pray for our Association of Related Churches, God. Lord, we pray for the uh, Gateway Center for Jewish Evangelism, God. We pray that the Jewish people, for the most part, have not accepted Jesus. We pray that they will. We pray that they will come to know Jesus as their Messiah, as their Lord and their Savior, Father. So we lift them up in prayer, God. Lord, we thank you for the Nuevo Health, uh, Christian Health Care Center uh, here in Nuevo, God. We just pray your blessings and favor be with their CEO, Mark Blocker, and his staff, God. And we pray your blessing and favor upon them. We pray for Pathway for Life, Lord, and for World Mission, two missions, Lord, that we just dearly love, Michelle, um, Rima, or, uh, Michelle in Kenya, and then... Um, uh, Greg Kelly and Comstock Park with World Mission. And we just pray your blessing upon both of these mission fields, one in Kenya, one in the 1040 window of our world, God, both reaching out, both reaching. And we pray your blessing and favor upon them and ask this in Jesus' name, God. So we thank you that we can be here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for what we're going to learn today about the prayer of Jabez. We want your blessing. We want influence. We want your presence. We want your protection. And we give you praise and honor and glory. So, Father, may this service do all of that. May it lift up the name of Jesus. And, Lord, may it just evoke great blessing in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you, team, for that uh, song. That is clearly one of my favorite songs. Um, so um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Pastor Clint Abbott. I'm the lead pastor here at Better Life Church, and uh, really glad that you are with us today. I just want to uh, welcome you, and I want to share a few things with you that we have going on uh, by way of news or announcements here. 
<clears throat> so we'll just kind of roll the slides here. So of course, as always, uh, there's a connection card in your worship guides, and we ask you to fill it out and uh, share that with us and let us know there's a place for uh, prayer. And um, we ask that uh, uh, if you share prayer requests with us, we'll pray for you. We have, you heard me refer to Saturday prayer. We were here yesterday praying over those prayer cards, and it was just a really good, good service. Uh, for those of you that are regular here, and maybe you don't feel inclined to fill out a connection card, and maybe you're thinking, well, I'm, I'm not going to waste a card by just flipping out the prayer part. Look, there are prayer cards, if that has been your thought, out on guest services table, and just grab a prayer card. It says prayer card. It looks like the guest services card, but it says prayer card. And there's three different cards that you can take and detach. So take the card, fill out prayer requests for us today, and put, drop them in the offering bucket, detach it, and you got two more cards for the next couple weeks, okay? So that's the idea. So we really want to pray for you. We want you to fill out those connection cards. We want you to know that that connection card really serves as a great tool, though, to help you learn more about Better Life Church and get plugged in. So certainly that. We have children's ministry, BLC Kids, K-5. We have a nursery available for birth through age four. And of course, as you heard me share last week, that in three weeks, our kids are, are moving up and they're going upstairs and they're going to be on the main level. It's going to be a whole different animal up there, uh, if I can call it that. And uh, um, they're going to have a great time. They're going to have a full hour while we're here. They're going to have full 75 minutes. Uh, our services are 75 minutes. So they're going to have a full 75 minute of praise and worship in their age appropriate level. And we're going to just have a great time. For some who haven't been real hot about our nursery area because it's kind of small, well, they're gonna, that nursery area is going to have almost 600 square feet of space, so it's a lot of room. So, you know, invite people who, if there's been people that haven't been coming because of those limitations, those limitations, our God has just been limitless, you know. Anytime we thought there was a limitation, God just kind of removes the barriers. So that's a little bit about kids' ministry. Our growth track, I'm very excited to share our growth track is tonight. And I would love for you to come to that. If you have not yet come, I would love to have you attend. I share a mission, our vision, our values. I, I help you find your spiritual gifts about how God has wired you, uh, how about how you can get plugged in and, and maybe serve in that area if you wish. If you've got questions about the church, I answer every question. We do it in about a 90-minute uh, time period. If you haven't yet uh, um, said that you've been interested, it's not too late. Fill out a connection card today. Say, a growth track. I'd like to be at 6 o'clock tonight. And we're done in 90 minutes. Out the door by 7.30. I'm good on my time. I'm good on my time, all right? So that's a little bit about that. We have our, our student ministries is going to also be starting up here this fall. And this is their first event. It's, <clears throat> it was floating on the river, but we're not sure. I think that changed uh, given Justin, as you know, Justin and Ashley, and I hope they're watching us today. And if they are, hi. Hi, and, Justin. Um, um, so, uh, and we've been praying for them. Uh, Justin had severe burns uh, on the job type of thing. He works for Excel Propane, so he had like, what, minus 44 degrees propane liquid spray on him, and he's had severe skin burns, and so that's been uh, something that they've had to deal with. And then, and then so Ashley has been tr taking care of him, and then, of course, little Caleb had appendicitis last week, has appendix removed, so we've been praying for them. So we think that that may, uh, we're not sure what the youth event is, but it's going to be at Justin and Ashley's house. You, there is a sign-up sheet out on the kids' check-in station. So if you're, a, if you're grade 6 through 12 and you're interested in this, we want you to sign up for that, and we can get you more information about that. So there you go for si grades 6 through 12. We have our back-to-school event also in uh, three weeks on the 27th. Um, on Saturday the 27th, is uh, we're going to be giving away school supplies. And so if you haven't had a chance to donate school supplies, there are bins out there that you can bring school supplies and load them up. If you want to donate money because maybe you don't want to go shopping, you want somebody else to do that for you, then you can just, uh, above your tithes and offerings, submit a gift and, and put on the offering envelope back to school event, and we'll put that in that fund, uh, and we will send our shoppers shopping here very, very soon. So that's we're going to be giving away things. There's going to be a food truck. Wilbur's uh, band called Gained Access will be playing. It's going to be a festive, fun, family environment out there on the parking lot. So that's going to be great. Yep. And of course, on Sunday mornings, we always uh, bring to the house of the God our tithe, of God our tithes and our offerings. We trust God. We provide different ways that you can do that. You can text to give. You can go online. You can write a check and put it in the offering. You can catch, whatever you want to do. But it's just we honor God with our first and our best. And I, I teach that. I practice that. Our church practices that. In fact. 
Um, so, uh, for example, last week, as we closed out July, it's the 1st of August, our church practices tithing. We believe not only that individuals should take the first 10% of what God gives to them, <clears throat> and uh, you just got to remember everything belongs to God. It's not really yours. Everything belongs to God. So you, you get to return. God just says return 10%. You can keep the other 90 So we return as an act of worship individually. As a church, we do that too. Before any checks are written for any bills or, or staff or whatever, we uh, have our we, we tithe up to those missions, to those uh, four groups I mentioned, to ARC, to um, uh, ARC church, church Planting, to the Gateway People of Israel, to uh, Nuevo Christian Healthcare Center. By the way, Mark Blocker, the CEO, had wrote, wrote, wrote me a letter. He said, you're the first church that has ever come on monthly to, to provide monthly support to the Christian Healthcare Center. By the way, the Christian Healthcare Center, I'm going to give a shout out to Mark Blocker and his group. That is truly, truly, truly a great free market system. I was reading, you understand that as a, I'm a preacher, but I've taught economics um, for quite a while. And so I'm a free market economist, and, um, and I really believe in the free market. And that is a great free market way is cash. Cash works great. Um, you can go and you can pay for whatever service, and they do it from a, a Christian perspective. They're not trying to satisfy an insurance company. They're not trying to satisfy Medicare, all right? They are trying to satisfy you and give you the coverage that you absolutely need. So just a little shout out to them, and we support them monthly. And then we also support a ministry in Kenya, and then also World Mission, which sends out these little treasure boxes to what we call the 1040 window, which is um, north of Africa and east Turkey, you know, heavy Islam here is the 1040 window. And they take these little treasure boxes, and it's scripture. It's, a, it's like an MP3 player that is it's the Bible in that language. So it's really, really cool. Uh, so, we, and so that's why we support those ministries, and, we, and that's our tithe as a church. Okay, that was a long uh, yeah, thing about that. <laughs> and that's it. So I, I, okay, so I covered it. That was really good. So I'm so happy to have you here today. Why don't you stand, turn, greet one another. Kids can go off to BLC Kids. Before we start in, I, I did forget to, I think I forgot to mention that this is, today is, uh, we had Saturday prayer yesterday, but today is starting what I call 21 days of prayer, and it's a, uh, a thing I do in January and in August where I have a focused, intentional time of prayer, and then what I do is I send a blog out to you, so you're going to get an email from me every day for 21 days, my, my, um, my blog and my 21 days of prayer. Now, just because we believe that in praying, we believe in pray first. And so out on the guest services table are these black wristbands, and they say pray first. They're free. Take one. It's a great reminder for you to pray first. Also free are these pray first prayer guides. And these actually, I provide you with different kinds of prayers so that you can know how to pray. Sometimes we literally don't know how to pray. And so yesterday I, got, I took our, our people through um, the Lord's Prayer. Well, a lot of people are familiar with the Lord's Prayer. Well, then there's another prayer here called, that I'll probably do next week or the week after called Tabernacle Prayer. Okay, there's warfare prayers. There is uh, praying for individuals. There's all sorts of things that you can pray. Praying scripture, right? 
And so all of that is here as a resource for you. Whether you come, I would love for you to come to Saturday prayer, but whether you do or not, this can help you in your prayer life at home. These are free on guest services table, so make sure you pick one up along with the Pray First wristband uh, before you head out today. All right, I guess we got our message bumper here for today. I'm going to give you this. <laughs> Just like you're hearing coming out of here. Usually there's a little more volume of the things I prepare. All right, um, by the way, so we're going to get into, so we're going to talk about um, the prayer of Jabez today. Um, you get your message notes out. If you need a Bible or a pen, raise your hand, and we'll make sure you get a Bible or a pen if you need one. All right? Um, otherwise, um, we're going to be looking at this prayer of Jabez, insights from First Chronicles chapter 4. And the thought that I have today is, is it okay to ask God for his blessing? Is that, is that legit? Is that, you know, is that okay uh, to do that? You know, Lord, help me. You know, maybe you've done that. Maybe you have done that. Maybe you have said with your finances, Lord, help me with our finances. We just, there's more month than money. There isn't really, but that's what people sometimes think, all right? Yeah. So there's more month than money. Or maybe, Lord, guide me to the right person, the right relationship that I need to have. Maybe you have prayed that. Okay, You've asked God for his blessing, for his guidance in that. Maybe you've um, uh, asked maybe to the right church. Lord, lead me to the right church, and this is the right church for you. Okay, We have everything you need, and if, you don't, if we don't have it, you don't need it. So <laughs> you're in the right place, okay, <laughs> type of thing. Um, maybe uh, as kids, we have said this, Lord... Help me in this upcoming test. Lord, help me to have the answers. Now, having taught high school for a while, this is what I would tell the students. I said that I used to pray for my students that God would bless them with wisdom and knowledge for the test to the degree that they studied. <laughs> okay, to the degree that they studied. They, got, they still got to study. They still got to do that. All right, well, Lord, help, help us. Uh, lead me to people that I can go share my faith. So I think we probably do ask God for his leading and for his blessing. So today we're going to look at and consider Jabez. And you're probably thinking, who? Who is Jabez? Well, let's take a look at 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. 1 Chronicles, as you read through the scriptures, and, and hopefully you do soap, scripture observation, application, prayer, which is what I teach here which is a Bible reading and journaling technique. And uh, hopefully, you, as you're reading through, well, when you get to Chronicles, there's a lot of this person followed this person, this person begot, there's a lot of genealogy, all right? And it can be, it can be a little much. Uh, and you go, Lord, are you sure you really wanted to inspire that scripture, okay? But right there in chapter four, all of a sudden, just kind of bouncing out in chapter four, is this thing about Jabez. And it says uh, in 1 Chronicles 4, 9 and 10, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, you know, I've got a feeling there. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Hallelujah. As I look at that passage, I think, I wonder what it thought, you know, it says he's more honorable, all right? And the word honorable there means to be heavy or to be numerous or rich. It's weighty. It's the same, it's the same term that is used to describe the glory of God. And there, so there was something about Jabez's life that brought glory to God because of how he lived. And, and, and that's why he stood out above everybody else. His name, and it says it right here in the passage, that his name means pain. 
His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. And so that's, his, that's, what, that's, the name, that's what his name means. And I thought, what kind of name is that to give your kid, you know? So I started, I started thinking about names, okay? For example, my name, Clinton, all right, is English, and it means town on a hill, okay? Uh, my wife's name, Michelle, that is French, and it means who is like God. Okay, come down now, dear. You need to come down. Okay? Way back there. Let me show you. Okay. Wilbur, his, that is English. It means will fortress. It's a derivative of, it comes from William, which is English, which means will, desire, helmet, protection. All right, isn't that cool? Uh, K comes from the Greek, and it means rejoice. Whoop. All right. Uh, Landon comes from the English, means from the long hill. Uh, Amy, where's Amy? Oh, Amy's teaching today. Amy, Latin, which means beloved. All right. Chuck, Charles is English, means free man. <clears throat> Dawn is English, means sunrise. Hey, sunrise. <laughs> okay. And so on. So, you know, you can take pride in your name. You can say, that's my name. Jabez would say, my name is pain or sorrow. <laughs> and he was named that because his mother had, give, had pain giving him. And as I thought about that, I thought about uh, my life, my wife's, uh, about our family. That our kids, as they came out of the womb, that's been pretty much their life. I mean, it's, it's true. My, when I think of pain, my, my, our first one, Michelle was in labor with my oldest son, Matt, for 39 and a half hours. How would you like that, okay? 39 and a half hours of labor and pain. And, uh, and, and so he was hard on her. <clears throat> My son Matt has lived a hard life. I'm rejoicing that he loves Jesus now. And though he's in prison, he's doing great things. He's preaching. He's an elder for, a, for Newberry Correctional Facility. There, there's a church up there that has a jail ministry, and he's one of their elders. He preaches, and uh, he's doing great. But he has lived a hard life, just like he came out. My second son, <clears throat> he... Uh, that was her quickest. He kind of flew right out. Woo! You know, look out. Catch him. And, and his life, is he's like that. He's just so easy going. He's like that. And our third son, he's just kind of a mix. And so we see kind of like how they came out is how they've lived. Wow. And so Jabez, I don't know if there's much truth to that, but that's our observation. And Jabez was kind of like that. He, he cried out because he said, <clears throat> Jabez cried out <clears throat> to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. So Jabez himself <clears throat> had experienced some pain. And I think when you're born small and the odds are against you, I think you tend to dream big. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know what Jabez might have been thinking or dreaming when he prays to God, <clears throat> but this morning we're going to look at what it means to ask God for blessing. Free from pain. He could be saying he wants to be free from himself. What's that? He could be saying, I want to be free from myself. Mm -hmm. He could be. He could be. Well, let's... <clears throat> here are some questions that I think... <clears throat> uh, questions we might ask regarding receiving God's blessing or favor. First question is, why should we ask God... For his blessing. Why should we ask God? And I put here, why not? <clears throat> why not ask God for his blessing? Um, now let me answer that question. Great people of the faith, here's the reason why, is great people of faith think differently than other people. The Bible says that without faith, <clears throat> it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly or diligently seek him. And that's in Hebrews 11.6. In fact, <clears throat> that passage in Hebrews 11 is talking about a lot of great heroes of the faith. By faith Abraham, by faith Noah, by faith Abel, by faith Adam, by faith Enoch. <clears throat> great people of the faith. And there's a couple things that it says over here about them. One, it says these, this whole list of people of faith, we're all commended, oops, I, uh, this one here. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things 
promised, they only saw them in a, and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on the earth. And then it says in verse 39 of this Hebrews 11, These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. But God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. And the writer of Hebrews is talking about these great people of faith. He's talking about how they lived, and they lived differently than what other people do because they would move out, step out in faith. I mean, Abraham, God says to Abraham, I want you to leave your family, and I want you to go here. And, he, he, and Abraham, that was tough for Abram to leave his family and then to go someplace and then tell other people he was going to go, where are you going? I don't know, God told me to go this, to this place here. I've never been here before, you know. And so people of faith do think differently <clears throat> than others. They are simply believing God for. Uh, they are no limits and no boundaries type of people. And that's why the writer of Hebrews uh, says in chapter 12, verse 1, that as we're surrounded by this great crowd of witnesses, well, the witnesses he's talking about is those people in Hebrews 11. And it's not so much that they are looking down from heaven upon us, they could be, but it's more that we are looking at their testimony of faith and how they live. People of faith live differently. People who ask God's blessings live differently than other people. <clears throat> they are people who have no limits, no boundaries. And when I think of current examples, some just, <clears throat> there's a lot that come to my mind, but here's three that came to my mind just like that. One is Johnny Erickson Tata. She's the young lady who, of my generation, who had a diving accident at the age of 16, 17. She dove and she became a quadriplegic. She had an accident. She, she hit whatever and, and damaged her spine, became a quadriplegic. But she did not let that define her. <clears throat> she has lived in faith, and today she goes all over the world, Johnny and Friends radio station. She's an evangelist, and she reaches thousands of people for Christ. She lives differently because she's a person of faith. Uh, another person I thought of was, uh, he just celebrated his 40 years in heaven, co uh, contemporary musician Keith Green. What a fantastic story about Keith Green. And if anybody, if you don't know who Keith Green is, let me tell you this. All of the current contemporary musicians who know music will tell you Keith Green was the man. Keith Green was the man. He came to know Christ and uh, his life was set. He was raised by a family that Jewish background, and his life was set on a, on a rocket. He was gonna he was gonna be in Hollywood. He was gonna be a great artist. And at like the age of ten or twelve, he had a contract with Decca Records, and uh, he was doing great things. And as a teenager, he he became uh, he was searching for answers in life. And finally, at the age of about twenty, uh, he uh, asked Christ to be his savior. He came to know Christ, and all that music. Ability and gift and skill he used for the Lord <clears throat> and his music was phenomenal I remember he is very much a contemporary of me because I was I was tracking along the same line in the mid 70s And as I became a Christian a Christ follower I was looking for music that was good because I grew up with rock and roll and all we had was hymns and the Gaithers <laughs> And back then the Gaithers were considered contemporary now you're wrong with the Gaithers like their music, okay, but uh but, you know, that's the way it was, and there wasn't really a sound. In fact, when I was, um, so as I've been working with Justin in student ministries, I was sharing with him about um, you want to make sure that when you have your first meeting with your teens, that you have a devotional, you have a, an opportunity for them to pray, you want to have some good Christian music background. I said, let me tell you about this. I did youth ministry for seven years, and in that first seven years, like I said, I, didn't, I was looking for a music that I could reach to. We had hymns. You don't want to play hymns when you're trying to reach teens and the, the Gaithers. And so what was it? <clears throat> and so uh, I remember one of our youth outings uh, at my house. It was like a Halloween party. Uh, the following week, uh, I got called into the pastor's office because we were playing Black Sabbath <laughs> as background music. And I was told by the pastor, oh, you really should play Black Sabbath as background music. And I'm like, well, there's no good music, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, then one of my teens, and I was only a few years older than them. I was like 21 or 22 brought me this a cassette tape okay young people under 30 cassette tapes it's a little thing like this cartridge has got the tape the real music okay so brought me this so, and then there was some sand there was some good music that she recorded and on there was keith green and some music from his first album from here for what which was for him who has ears to hear let him hear and i heard this song and i'm going that is an awesome sound and he was great and he was sparrow records 
Number one, he, whoever's number one today, Keith Green was number one from 1977 to about 1981, all right? And he died in 1982 in a plane crash. But before he did, he was so, he was so, music just flowed out of him because he, he was in the word. And it's another example, you can't give away what you don't have, but Keith Green can give it away because he had it. Okay, the Lord just blessed him and his music was, was phenomenal. But he got to a point where he said, and this is a people of faith think differently. He said, uh, is it ministry or is this like performance? Because if this is ministry, I can't charge for the gospel. He wanted to give his records away for free. And Sparrow Records, he was Sparrow Records' number one artist in that time period. And he said, I, we want, I want to get in. They, 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 they couldn't make it happen as a business. So he left Sparrow, and that was fine. They, 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 they knew that if God had told him to do this, he should do it. He left Sparrow, and he formed his own record label. called. He had a ministry called The Last Days Ministry. And so he started a record label called Pretty Good Records. All right, And he would literally give them away for whatever you could afford. If you could, if you could afford $5, $6, I think that's what they cost back in that day. That's what you paid. If you could do a dollar, that would be fine. And if you couldn't afford it, he'd just give it to you. All right? Well, people like that of faith think differently than other people. No limits, no boundaries kind of people. I've got this other person I want to share with you. He's an evangelist. Amazing story. His name is Nick Vujicic. He has no arms and no legs and a tremendous, powerful story. Here's Nick Vujicic. Hi, my name is Nick Vujicic. Without arms and legs, my parents had no idea that their limbless boy would turn into the hands and feet of the love of Jesus Christ spread all around the world. As a child, I was bullied and I went to Sunday school and learned that Jesus loved me, that he had a hope plan the future for me as well. And I'm like, what kind of plan is this? Can I suggest a plan B? So I prayed for arms and legs and they did not come. And when I didn't hear anything from heaven, I started doubting that he indeed had a plan for me. So I prayed for arms and legs, but what I realized what I needed more was heaven, peace, purpose, and forgiveness of my sin. At age 10, I tried to commit suicide because of the bullying predominantly at school. I didn't feel like I'd ever be independent and only a burden to my parents. I'd always be alone and never get married and never have a family never find a purpose worth living for, hence a value worthy. So I tried to commit suicide at age 10 with six inches of bath water. I was stopped by one thought, and the thought was seeing my mom and my dad crying at my grave, wishing they could have done something more. At age 15, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ because I realized more than arms and legs, I wanted purpose and salvation and healing, forgiveness of my sins. Wanted Jesus. But I still didn't know why I was born this way. Well, in John chapter 9, everyone asked Jesus why was that blind man born that way? Jesus said it was done so that the works of God would be revealed through him. What I realized I was actually as blind as the blind man. We had no idea what God had in store. Just because you don't see what God has in store doesn't mean his store is empty. Kids come up and say, what happened? And I say, cigarettes. <laughs> Definitely as a child and a teenager, I'd never thought I'd be a speaker that would travel around the world and meet presidents and speak at congresses and be in stadiums as large as 110,000. I had no idea. And I just give God all the glory and all the praise for the people who pray for us, the people who support us and made this possible to travel around and preach the gospel to millions of souls. God loves me not because of what I can do or what I will do for the kingdom of God. He just loves me for me. And I put my little foot on my wife's womb as she was pregnant with our first son. Uh, I felt him kick and I looked at my wife in her eyes and I said, babe, I love him. I never touched him, saw him, heard him laugh, see him smile. He never earned my love. That love was always there from the beginning, before he was even born. So be challenged today to know that God is not done with you yet. He wants to stretch you a little bit. And I dare you to believe in the greatness of our God, because he has no limit. People of faith live differently. There are no limits. Key there, purpose. Yes. Finding your purpose in life. Finding your purpose in life. 
It's not simply enough to know that God exists, but we must diligently seek him out. So do we really believe that God rewards as favor? You know, I see examples all the time in the Bible of, of people who had great success, Joseph, Job, David, others, because it's, there's like a tagline in the life that says, because God was with them. Yes. Because God was with them. And so, uh, I, do I, so the, a question for us to ask is, do I live each day with an expectation of God that he will bless me? See, that is what people of faith do. They earnestly, passionately seek God with expectation of receiving his blessing. You have not because you ask not. And so the first question is, why, why not, people of faith live differently? Secondly, I might ask the question, well, what does it mean to bless or to be blessed? And it, it means to, the, the word means to impart blessing or favor that bring, that things will go well, okay? Blessing, blessed indeed, which is what some translations say, he says, oh, bless me indeed, just as a multiplication of a blessing. It's like, you know, exponent, it's exponential, you know, bless me exponentially. So, um, so to ask God, it means to ask God for, or to impart spiritual, supernatural favor. And here's some passages um, in your notes and on the screen. Uh, the blessings of the Lord bring wealth, and he adds no trouble to it. The Lord blesses his people with peace. I will bless them and the places surrounding my hill. I will send shut down showers in season. There will be showers of blessing. The name of the Lord of all, and the name of the Lord is Lord of all, and he richly blesses all who call on him. And the thought that I had as I was looking at this was, Jabez did not define to God the blessing. He left it entirely up to God to decide what the blessing would be, when and where they might be. And that is what you call trust. <laughs> that is what you call trust. That may, and that may have made him more honorable than others because, you know, even though he did, in addition to his prayer of blessing, he was specific in some things. I mean, he said, give me influence, your presence, and your protection. But he starts out, God, I just want to know that you're blessing me, that you're going to be there. And he, and he didn't try to to dictate to God how that should be. He actually trusted God to decide when and where and what that should be. And I think that made him more honorable. When your name is pain and perhaps you, perhaps you long for better things, we seek God's blessing and we should leave it to him. Now, there are different ways that God blesses us, all right? Uh, the blessings of God. There are natural laws. There is material prosperity. There's physical laws. There's emotional and mental for example, some of the natural laws of blessing, for example, take sowing and reaping. I talked about tithing earlier today when I was mentioning about what we do as a church, all right? So God places, think about it this way, God places resources into our hands, and if we wisely sow or plant or manage them, we will reap his blessing. And that's true of every area of your life, not just with money, but with your time and your talent as well, all right? If we manage that wisely, God will bless that, and that's a natural law. The Bible says, whatever you sow, you'll also reap. That's, that, that's true. And God wants that to be true on the positive side. Uh, material prosperity, okay? There are some people who simply um, are better at using their talents than other people. Some people are just more gifted in other areas than, and than others. And, uh, you know, Jesus talks about the, the parable of the stewards with the talents. There's a talent, but there was a steward that had five talents. There was a steward that had three talents. And the steward of one talent that Jesus gave them each according to their ability. What does that mean? It means just naturally some people are better in some areas than others, all right? But that's another, but that's an area that God blesses. He will bless the one talent person just as much as he blesses the five. So those are truth. Those are areas. In the physical area, God blesses us. But, you know, there are things that we have to do. Just like in sowing, just like in tithing, we have to sow, Right? If you're, if you're going to really experience the blessings of God, you've got to plant, you've got to give, all right? You've got to do that to, to receive his blessing. You've got to make a step forward. So if you're praying for physical blessing, let's say I'm praying, I want God to bless me physically, then I need to do things to take care of my body, that which will then bring about the blessings of God, okay? 
If I if I want to lift things more, I need to get to the gym, okay, and work out, okay. If if I'm uh, if I want to be trimmer, then then I just can't just say God make me trimmer. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. God gives you some things to do, and then when you do, then you realize He comes alongside and, and, and comes along with you. So that's what it means, I think, to be blessed. Now, um, and so we are to ask God. Then it's okay to ask one. one why should we ask God for his blessings? Because people of faith think, live and think differently. What does it mean to be blessed? It means that God is just with us. It's, a, it's that knowledge that he is with us, that he's providing for us, and he provides for us in multiple, multiple ways. And then the third question is, how do I go about asking for God's blessing? Jabez said, Lord, bless me. Actually, he said, oh, <laughs> Oh, Lord, bless me. I mean, there was some pain there, okay? There was some desire. Oh, that you would bless me. Well, um, that, I think, reflected his, in, what I call his internalized commitment to God. Jabez had an internal commitment to God. Now, today, that might not be a term that you would use, okay? You might not say, uh, as I'm asking for God's blessing, you might not say I have an internalized commitment to God. Probably what you would say is, I'm believing God for. Okay? It's the same thing. <laughs> okay? I'm believing God for. All right? I'm believing God for this. Okay? Um, I'm believing God for, you know, whatever it is that you're trusting and asking him for. And, and when, when we say that I'm believing God, the reason I use that term internalized commitment because when I say I'm believing God for something, there is something that has happened to me internally in my being that I know that he's going to do something, okay? Um, Rick Warren talks a lot about shape when we talk about spiritual gifts, and he talks about, he uses this analogy called shape. S is, script, uh, S is a spiritual gift. H stands for your heart. What do, you, what do you love to do? A stands for your ability or your aptitude. P stands for your personality. And E stands for your experiences, painful and joyful experiences. And it's that part, those experiences, that give us that internalized commitment where we can truly believe God for something because we've internalized something, because we've experienced something, maybe on the painful side, on the joyful side. Let me give you an example. Uh, Landon knows this because he's an electrician, and I told him this. I have a profound, I have a profound respect for electricity, okay? Why do I say that? Because when I was five years old, I took a fork and put it in the light in the socket, in the wall all that, okay? My hand got charred. I can still see a little brown, brown hand, okay? And so I, had, I learned very, very well to respect electricity. I understand it very, very well. Um, when I was ministering down in the Kentwood, Caledonia area, you've heard me talk about this young lady. We had a young lady that lived with us for about a year. She was on our worship team. And we would go out to dinner, and sometimes we'd, and we'd take her along. And so she would, as I'm driving, she would be in the back seat, Michelle and I in the front seat, and she would say, Pastor Clint, you drive like my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to try to explain to her that, no, 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 what you must understand, dear girl, is I have 30 years of ditch experience on you. <laughs> in other words, in the wintertime, I've been in the ditch, okay? I've been rolled over on the side. I know what it's like. And so those are some painful experiences that I have learned very, very well. But on the joyful side, I have watched God work miracles in my life, all right? I have watched him do that, and I know this. If he's done it before, see, I've internalized it. I'm believing God for Why? Because if he's done it before, he'll do it again. Yes, he will do it again. If he's done it before, he'll do it again. It says in Romans that God is no respecter of persons. Romans um, uh, 2 verse 11 says, For there is no respecter of persons with God. No That means no partiality, no favoritism. If God has done it before, he'll do it again. If God has done it for someone else, he'll do it for you. All right? And, that, and, and so let me give you a couple examples. I think of the, in the Old Testament, King Hezekiah. Great man of God. Awesome man of God. One of the great kings of Israel. 
But Isaiah the prophet was sent to him to let him know that God was telling him it was time you need to get your house in order. Not something you really want to hear when you've been living for the Lord that it's time to get your house in order. So what does Hezekiah do? He prays. He prays. And God hears his prayer. And he sends Isaiah the prophet back to say, okay, I'm going to give you more time. And he added 15 years to his life. If God has done it for someone else, he'll do it for you. I remember in 1984, sitting in a midweek prayer and Bible study, praying for a lady by the name of Mrs. Mickham, who had cancer, and it was growing, it was fast, and it was, this was September, and she was told to get her life in order with her family, because she probably wasn't going to make it past Christmas, and God, we prayed, believing, and God extended her life 15 years. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yes, absolutely. My mom, my dear, mom, my dear mother, and... Um, uh, in the year 2000, it was, in fact, it was Monday, Thursday. It was the day before um, Good Friday of the year 2000. And I had just done a funeral that Thursday uh, in, uh, in New Waco. I was pastoring at uh, New Community Church. And my mom had come down with a severe bout of pancreatitis. My mom was 70 years old at the time. So, the, the, so severe. Only 5% of the people make it. All right? When... When she left um, Gerber Hospital, now Spectrum in Fremont, they airlifted her to uh, Butterworth, Spectrum in Grand Rapids. The surgeons in Fremont said, we won't see your mom back. She had almost all of her pancreas removed, just a little tail that was taken out. But the Lord, we prayed and prayed and prayed, believing God, Amen. because if he did it before and he did it for someone else, he'll do it again. The Lord added 20 years to my mom's life. Yeah? The Lord added 20 years to my mom's life. So that's why I stand before you telling you that um, God, God wants to bless us. He wants us to come to him. People of faith live differently. We must understand uh, what it means to have his favor and, and so on. But we must also understand that if he did it before and if he did it for someone else, he'll do it for you. He's no respecter of persons. I, I still remember, as, as I stand here to, you know, thinking about our church. I remember it was in October, you know, you've heard the story. We just had a handful of people. We're going to plant a new church. We did a community interest meeting uh, the first week of October, I think, of last year, 2021. What a great start. We had four people show up. It was awesome, <laughs> you know. But look what it has become and, and what it has grown to, all right, and how God has provided because we pray that God would bless that and if God has done it before, He's done it again. That's why I know that our church is moving forward. We got summer problem. We got summer our attendance is down a little bit, but it, we're going to come back. I really believe it. We're going to come back. We've got some exciting things going on, and I believe if God has done it before, He'll do it again. If He's done it for someone else, He'll do it for you. Just like in my life, I know I've watched God birth faith in my heart. I have watched God work in my life. I've watched my, my faith grow exponentially strong. And so I know if he's done that for me, he'll do that for you, all right? Because right? that's what God does. He is no respecter of persons. And so we just move forward and we pray, believing God, internalized commitment, believing God that he's going to do it. James says it like this. You do, not, you do not have because you do not ask God. But when you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You see, when we ask, we want to make sure that we're asking in alignment with, with God. So that's why we grow close to God. That's why we have prayer with God. We read the word. We, we pray scriptures. We read. We grow. Because when we do that, then the things we ask for are in alignment with what he wants to bless us. That's why I say so many times, don't ask God to bless you, but ask God to do that you might do what he's blessing, which is also being received. So that's what you want to do. So, in fact, um, Jesus said this, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. And so we should start asking God and believing that he wants to bless us. Understanding that he is no respecter of persons and that if he did it before and if he did it for someone else, he's going to do it again. He's going to do it for you if our worship team wants to come up and so back to that question initially this morning should i ask god for his favor and blessing answer yes <laughs> why not yes 
because that's what people of faith have done and do. People without borders, limitless, that's what they do. Seek out God and leave the blessing entirely up to him. Now, there are times when we should pray specifically, but we're just talking about that random, God bless me. Leave that up to him to decide how he, how and when and where he will do that. That's trust, okay? And trust him. And then third, have that internalized commitment. Believe, I'm believing God for, because if he's done it before, he'll do it again. If he's done it for someone else, he will certainly do it for you. Right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you, Lord, so much for this person, Jabez, who was born in pain and experienced pain. And perhaps it was. Perhaps it, he, he had pain from himself. Maybe he just made a lot of poor decisions early, but he was more honorable. Because of his prayer to be blessed. So thank you, God. Thank you for this example. Thank you, God, for the truth that we learned. That why not ask for blessing? We ask you, God, because you know, we know that you are a giver. And we just want to receive what you have for us. You are a blesser. And we want to receive your blessings because that's what people of faith have done and do. No borders, limitless. God, we want to seek you out and just leave the blessing in your entirely up to you, God. We're trusting you. And God, we are believing you for different things in our life. Some of you might be believing God for improved finances. Some of you might be believing God for just greater spiritual growth in your life. Some of you might be believing God for <clears throat> material needs, houses, cars, relationships. But based on our experiences, we know that if he did it before, he'll do it again. And if he's done it for others, he'll do it for you. So Heavenly Father, this morning, we come to you in faith, believing that you do want to bless us. And we're saying yes, as Jabez did. Bless us indeed. Bless us indeed, Father. Fill us, Lord, with, with um, your love. Fill us, Lord, with uh, the Holy Spirit, with wisdom. And Lord, we're going to trust you on these blessings. And Lord, for some things that we are believing you for, we're trusting you. We don't know when that will happen. We don't know where. We don't know how. But we're, we're leaving it with you, Father. Because we love you and we praise you. Perhaps this morning as you're here and we're praying together, I just want to encourage you to believe God for something in your life for this week. I want you to think about the, the number one thing maybe that's been dominating your thought life. Because you can't let things dominate your thought life other than Jesus. If something else is in your thought life, that more than Jesus, and it's an idol. <clears throat> Might be a great need, but you're, you're letting that overtake you. And so, trust God and believe that this week, God is going to provide that need for you. You don't know when, you don't know where, you don't know exactly how, but you're going to put it in His hands, and you're going to leave it there. And you're going to trust Him, because that's what made Jabez more honest. And that's what will make you honorable before God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We praise you, God. We thank you for the life of Jabez and everything we've learned this morning. And we truly want to be people who live differently by faith. We truly want to trust you every step of the way. And we're believing you, God, for the big things in life. We praise you and thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, just some closing thoughts as the ushers want to get ready, ready to receive our tithes and offerings. Um, don't forget to fill out a connection card and drop it in the offering bucket um, and that just really helps us out if, you're gonna, if you'd like to come to the growth track it's not too late if you haven't 
if you haven't signed up for it, check it on the card. Growth track tonight, 6 o'clock, okay? It's not too late. Um, if you need prayer, prayer card on the bottom, fill that out. We would love to pray with you and for you. Uh, we, and Like I said, uh, we share those with our prayer team, unless it's confidential. And we also, on Saturday prayer, we bring them right up here. We spread them out here and we grab different prayer cards and we pray over them. So we are ready to pray uh, with you and for you. And now we're also going to pray for our tithes and our offerings. And then I want to pray a blessing over you. So uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. Father, we just thank you, God, for the opportunity this, uh, this morning to not only hear your word and to worship together, but now to, re to, to bring to you, as you have blessed us, our first and our best, God. We just want to bless you, and we thank you, God. And so we pray blessing over that. And now, Lord, I just want to bless our congregation. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the Lord bless you in your coming and your going. May he guide you in the wilderness and protect you in the storm. I ask and pray for your grace and peace and mercy to be upon every person and every family represented today. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so rise to your feet. They're going to receive you on. Rise to your feet. Join the team here in this last song. If you need prayer, if you want someone to pray for you this morning, come up now while they're playing this last song, and we will pray with you and for you. Oh, 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 oh,